Hi, welcome back to my channel, and this is a sound off on the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion part two. Okay, so we pick back up with Mia, and is her son Gordon's, or is he Ink's? She says it's Gordon. Ink thinks it's his kid, but she knows her body. She had IUI. This is Gordon's child. But to be real honest, this is dumb. This is what are we talking about here? I'm so glad that Karen shut this down. Because all these adults sitting here and nobody else thought that this is inappropriate. What are we doing here? Mia, tell all the lies you want to tell. Because you're going to do that anyways. Tell all your lies. But leave the babies out of it. Like, for real. Now, Andy tries to call Mia out and says, you know, why weren't you transparent about what was going on between you and Gordon? You know, Robin got a lot of backlash last season because she didn't tell us what was going on between her and Juan. And I'm so glad that Mia got a little bit of sense in her head because she shut that down and said, oh, no, no, no. I told Robin that I was thinking about divorcing Gordon. And she did do that. But also, I don't even think that that goes. Because the entire season... Mia has been shading V out of Gordon, saying he was broke, saying he was broke when she met him, saying she only married him for his money and she found out he was broke and she came into the marriage with an inheritance. We saw what was going on with them. We saw that clearly Mia wanted out. It's not the same, Andy. It's not the same. We see you trying to give Robin a little bone. It's not going to work because we could see what happened. Nice try, though. So Mia also tries to clear up this nonsense about her being an heiress. And she lets us know that around the time she met Gordon, she lost three grandparents. And so she, she was able to get her hands on some settlement money, some insurance money, policy money, something. And I feel like that probably is true. But the problem we got with that, Mia, is Mia, you told us you grew up in foster care. You told us you didn't have nobody. So you mean to tell us that these wonderful, generous, loving, thoughtful grandparents that left you an inheritance didn't want to help raise you? That don't make no sense, Mia. But I knew that already. I, I knew because Jacqueline's sister told us last year that your foster child life was not real. That you were raised by your grandmother. So... She told us that you had a wonderful family. And I kind of believe her. I'm leaning over to believing Jacqueline's sister simply because in the finale episode, we see your mom, we see your aunt, we see all this family, but you are a foster child. Okay, girl. So now Candace and Wendy are placed in the hot seat because Andy wants to know why didn't they reach out to Mia? And my thing is, Mia, you cheated on your husband. You got back together with your high school love you're happy like what's there to reach out to you for why would i be calling you if i'm calling you is to be nosy because you're fine you cheated on your man and you left him and you went to another man and you're happy about it what's there to check up on you for before the season even really premiered gordon was out there trashing mia candace had already told us in one of the little interviews that she did to promote the show that gordon reached out to Chris and Eddie to say, hey, if your wives want to know anything, I'm happy to tell them all this dirt on Mia. And they decided they weren't going to get involved. We already know this. Candace explained this to Andy, I believe, on Watch What Happens Live. I think so. Candace and Wendy are not fools. They're not stupid. They know a trap when they see one. Um, Gordon reached out to their husbands to give them this information so that they could be made to look like the bad guys if they used that information against Mia while the season was going on. And they didn't fall for the trap. Case closed. And now because they didn't take the bait, now they're trying to be like, oh, well, you didn't call and check up on me. Check up on you for what? Check up on you for where teen. This whole, oh, they didn't check up on me is foolishness. When Mia had her cancer scare, did Robin and Giselle call and check up on her? Did they? No. But Candace and Wendy, who have been treated a certain way by Mia, they're expected to call Mia and check up on Mia. This is foolishness if I've ever seen it. And another thing. Giselle sitting over there with Rob and Robin talking about so much. She apologized. Wendy has apologized to you twice. And you, you have ignored her for two years. So you can shut up. Okay? And Giselle, you're sitting over there talking about they were bumping vaginas. 
Flashing someone is not bumping vaginas. You say whatever you want to say out of your mouth. You are so reckless with your mouth. They were not bumping vaginas. You weren't even present for that. And then you wonder why you're sitting there on that couch for a second season in a row looking stupid because you just say words and you act like they don't have meaning. Your mouth is reckless, but you always got something to say about Candace's mouth. Now, this season, production did their very, very best to redeem Giselle. Okay, that worked really hard. And um, the craziest thing is that the whole season, they were trying to make her look like this angel and give everyone should give her some grace. And she ain't an angel, but you'll love to adore her if you get to know her, right? And she, and she exposed just how cold-hearted and mean she can really be. Okay, so when they showed the little clip of Wendy saying she wasn't going to say nothing to Giselle because when her mom was in the hospital, um, Giselle was making fun and talking crap about her mother. So she had nothing to say. I agreed with her. I agree with her. I don't care what nobody said. At the end of the day, you love your mama and daddy just like everybody else loves their mama and daddy. And if you can sit up there and... Disparage my mom, I don't care about yours, or your daddy, or your grandma, whoever. I don't care about nobody. If you don't care about my people, I don't care about yours. That's all, and that's it. Giselle wanted to make sure that everybody knew that that was a lie. She had no clue that Wendy's mother was in the hospital. She didn't know nothing about it. Um, I think that that's a lie. I don't believe Giselle. The way that these women pass information around to one another, I just don't believe that she didn't know. On top of that, I feel like after Wendy had that conversation with Karen, Candace, and Mia, the conversation about Wendy's mom ceased. Like they stopped talking about Wendy's mom altogether. That makes me feel as though, yeah, you knew. You knew something was up with her mom. And when you found out, y'all stopped talking about it. Y'all ain't fooling me. However, I don't even care if Giselle knew or didn't know. The same way that Giselle loves her mom, her daddy, her children, her family, is the same way that other people love their mama, their daddy, their children, and their family. So if you don't want people making rude remarks, you don't want them scrunching up their face, you don't want them rolling their eyes, you don't want them saying or doing anything insensitive, then you should set the precedence. But you have set the precedence of disrespecting and saying the wrong things about people. She says she never said nothing about Wendy's mama. You're a liar. I remember the scene. Giselle said she spoke to her ex-husband, who's a pastor, Jamal, and said to Jamal, they're over here doing some demonic things. And Jamal told her, oh, Giselle, that stuff is real. Stay away from them. And then later on, she said... Oh, Wendy's acting like she don't know, but she knows what her mom is doing. Eddie knows what her mom is doing. They're all working together for evil. You said that, Giselle, and y'all can go back and clean up because Bravo and Peacock have a habit of going back to edit things. Remember when Kenya wore the native headdress? They removed that from season 13 scene. Y'all have a habit of doing that. But the thing about it is, is people screenshot and record. And there are people like me who have impeccable memory. Y'all can't get over on some of us. Giselle, you said it. You said it and you're sitting up here lying about it. And one more thing. Okay, I saw people saying, oh my God, you can't compare Wendy's mom um, and Giselle's dad having brain cancer. No, you cannot compare the two things. But it doesn't really matter. Wendy's mom did an elective procedure of some sort. There were complications and she had to be rushed back to the hospital. That could have gone wrong. When you go into a hospital setting, anything can happen. Anything can happen at any time. You still said something negative about her mother. And at that time, what you did not know is that her mother was in a hospital. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. That's still her mom. So when it gets to Giselle's father and his passing, and she shares with us that, you know, they didn't do a regular sad funeral. They did a celebration of life, which I think is a really beautiful thing to do. Um, he lived a good life. He did a lot with his life. Um, he's seen a lot of things. He was able to raise his children and 
meet his grandkids and pour into them. And so when you live like that, when you get to a certain point, it is a beautiful thing to celebrate that person when they're no longer here. Um, of course she gets emotional and I can relate to that because I lost my father. So I know how that is. And now what gets me with Giselle is when Candace starts to tear up and Andy is like, you know, Candace, why are you tearing up? What's going on? And it's just like, I hate when people ask dumb questions. It's sad. Like someone lost their dad. I remember what it was like before my parents passed away and I would hear someone my age or younger, you know, if they lost a parent, it would terrify me because it was like, dang, it was them. It could easily be you. You know what I mean? Like they lost their mom and dad. You could easily lose yours. Like it's scary. It's triggering when someone dies and they're crying about someone's death. You're going to think about someone that you lost. Like, I don't know what was going on in Candace's mind, but we all know that Candace is an emotional person and we know that she cries. And the fact that Giselle could not just receive that it was empathy and said, oh, she's crying and trying to make this about her. It was just like, Giselle, you can't take five minutes off of being nasty and just accept that she's a human being. And it's like, we don't know who in Candace's life might be going through something. We don't know if that triggered an emotion of a loved one that passed already. You don't know none of that. You just couldn't take five minutes off from being wicked. And people were like, oh, why is Candace crying? She shouldn't have no emotion for her. She met this man. She spent time with this man and he died. It's a sad thing. You're gonna cry. I'll never forget. When I was eight years old, I was in the third grade and there was a girl in my class. Her mom was a teacher in our school. And the long short of the story is this woman had cancer and she died. Um, but we didn't know. We knew she had cancer and we knew that she had recovered. We did not know that the cancer came back. So one day, I believe it was a Friday afternoon, um, they came and got this girl from our class Maybe like 10 minutes later, they got another girl from our class who her mom also worked at the schools too, right? And they came and removed both of them from the class and they went home early. And so later on, the teachers informed us that the reason she had to leave early was because her mother passed away. And this girl and I were not friends. We didn't really see it for each other. Like it wasn't like a, she is not like a, a ugly energy, but we weren't really friends. And when I tell you this happened when I was in the third grade. I have carried that around with me my entire life. The week my mom died, I was thinking about that girl, okay? Never saw her again. I don't know how she's doing. I think of her often and I'm always wishing and hoping, like I hope wherever she's at in the world, I hope she's happy. But when I tell you that things like that, they stick to you. I carry that girl around in my heart to this day because I was just so sad for her. Like, we're eight years old. That's not something you have to deal with. Like, her mother, like they literally came to pick her from school to tell her her mother passed. It's sad. This girl wasn't my friend. But when I tell you I think about this girl all the time, it's like, when I don't understand how you, as a human being, you don't feel emotions for other people just because you don't like them you don't care nothing about them and maybe that's a foreign thing to Giselle because we know that she told us last season when she, she didn't care what happened to Wendy because she doesn't like Wendy so you know what I answered my own question I guess you can't take five minutes off and just be human you can't just receive that the girl felt bad for you that's terrible Giselle so let's move on to Candace and this lawsuit between Schmeagel um, we all know that it was dismissed with prejudice, so he can't even refile that unless something different happens and he has to file a whole new case. This is done. It's dead. He ain't getting nothing out of our girl. That two million, you can kiss it goodbye. Shout out to whoever asked Ashley, why are you acting like you don't know nothing about it? Shout out to that person. I didn't catch their name, but you know, shout out to them because they asked the right question. Ashley, you know you knew everything about this. You've been rubbing this man's feet every night. You know what's going on with this. You are 100% in on whatever this was supposed to be. And you definitely stood to get some of that money. You did. You ain't fooling none of us. And Candace sitting on that stage talking about, um, I didn't think you had nothing to do with it. 
Now, Candace. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what, Candace? If that's what you have to say, girl, that's what you have to say. You're not fooling me. I know you know that Ashley is in on this. But I know that you got to pick your battles. And some battles just aren't worth it. So you're just letting Ashley have this. But the rest of us, we know. Now, Andy brings up Candace and Robin's friendship. Like, y'all had a really good friendship. Y'all know y'all were really close. And Robin was like, yeah, but Giselle and Candace were also very cool. They were really close. And Giselle was like, yeah, 100%. She was like, nobody had her back season five more than me. Now, Candace, girl, Candace is my girl. Y'all know I love Candace down. But I got to agree with Giselle on this one. Candace says that Robin was more supportive than Giselle. Now, I wasn't there, okay? So I can't say for sure. But from what I saw as a viewer, Giselle had Candace's back. Giselle was way more supportive to Candace than Robin. Now, behind the scenes, maybe it was a little different to you, Candace. But from what we saw, Giselle has your back. When that incident happened, okay? I don't think that Candace, she didn't pick up on the social cues that Monique was really getting angry. I don't think she picked up on that. Let's start there. But Giselle did pick up on it. And when Giselle shoved Monique's shoulder, it was to tell her to cut it out. Stop, right? Right? And then Monique now says that that's what made her hit Candace because she thought it was Candace that shoved her shoulder. I don't believe that. I think that Giselle definitely was trying to stop something from going down. Unfortunately, it had the opposite effect. Karen stood there and said and did nothing. Robin stood on the edge of the table, holding the edge of the table, just looking. She didn't do a damn thing. There's no way I would be... Robin's size and my home girl is the smallest Candace and I just stand there and watch someone beat on her. I'm not doing that. Wendy and Giselle were the only two from the cast that actively, physically got in between them and tried to pull them apart from one another. Robin watched you get attacked. Robin watched you get beat up on. Now, I know we all mad at Giselle right now, but I ain't gonna never tell no lies on nobody. Giselle got in there and she helped to get you guys separated. So for that, I would always give her, I'm gonna give her her credit. She has your back. Even after the situation took place, Giselle was like, no, nah, what Monique did to that girl was wrong. She need to press charges. Now, I do think that she had her own motives because she probably saw what Monique did to Candace. She was like, well, if Monique could do that to Candace, she could do it to me too. And so I definitely think that that had something to do with Giselle helping to get Monique up off the show. And that's her bringing the security, her taking the stance of supporting you. I'm sorry. She might have had a little bit of a motive. But I still think that in that moment, you needed support. And she gave it to you. I'm not gonna ever forget Robin standing on the edge of the table watching you go down. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna forget that. She did that. Now, after the fact, yes, she started being nice to you, but she also, girl, let's not go back to season five. From what we saw, Giselle was very supportive to you. Even when they had their little popcorn show, the um, what was it, Bravo chat room, and Portia was trying to drag you, Giselle stood firm behind that you were not at fault. And that you did not deserve to be violated the way Monique did you. So Candace girl, you know I love you, but I disagree. I disagree 100%. Giselle was a friend to you that time. She was. I will say that obviously what happened last season has definitely... <laughs> it has changed things. And I think Giselle did that. In my honest opinion, I think Giselle thought that she could play with Candace. Right? A lot of people want to be friends with Giselle. And so she thinks she could play these games with y'all. And y'all just going to let her do what she wants to. Because y'all want to be her friend so bad. You want to be her friend so bad that you're just going to let her play with you like that. And Candace is not letting you play with her. But I do think, like, obviously we know she couldn't stand Monique. She couldn't stand Monique. But I don't think, I, I don't know. I know that Giselle has her rotten, rotten, dirty ways. But I've never been of the belief that, oh, she hated Monique more than Candace because season five, they was trying to get Candace. They was trying to get Candace iced off the show. 
So if you hated Monique, why not just ice Monique off the show? They were trying to ice Candace off. But then when Monique assaulted Candace, it was like, oh no, she got to go. I don't know. I don't know. Even with all of that. And I've heard many people say the same theory that they felt like she hated Monique more than Candace. I do think that Giselle did like Candace, though. I don't know. This is what I've seen. I really think that there was a time. There was a time when Giselle liked Candace. Now, that time is gone. It ain't never to return. But there was a time when she liked Candace. But some people only like their friends to be underneath them. Now, that's one thing. That is one thing I will say about the bird lady. She definitely clocked Giselle's teeth. Now, I will give her that. Because I think it was season two. You know, back when the Housewives used to write blogs. I never used to really read them. But if they talked about it on the show, then I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. But Monique, I think, wrote in her Housewives blog that Giselle only likes people who she feels are beneath her. That's why she loves Robin. I think she said something like, hence her girl crush on Robin. I have to agree with that. That was one thing that the bird lady got right. Giselle only wants to be your friend when you're beneath her. When Sharice was living good's first season, she didn't like Sharice. Now that Sharice is divorced and single and walking around with crispy wigs, oh, she loves Sharice. Sharice is the real grand dame. She wants Sharice to be back on the show full time. But where was this energy season one and two? You didn't like Ashley when Ashley was, you know, uh, walking around bragging that she was that girl, that she had money, that she married a billionaire. You didn't like her. But when y'all saw that Michael and her had that rough patch after season two at the reunion when he kicked her out of the apartment, now all of a sudden you love Ashley. Robin, we ain't got to run her list down. We already know what's up with Robin. But I think the bird lady clocked your teeth. You like people that are underneath you. That's why you liked Candace. Candace was the underdog. Everybody hated Candace. The fans, the viewers, everyone hated Candace. When Candace started getting a little bit of love and she put her album out and she, things start going a little bit good for Candace, now all of a sudden her husband is a creep and he wanted you down to the season six reunion hotel. Girl, I will say that Monique clocked her tea, but she clocked Monique's tea as well. She peeped that Monique's marriage wasn't what it was cracked up to be early on. And she was hating, but she clocked Monique's tea as well. So I guess they see each other. <laughs> so I'm re-watching this episode as I'm doing this video. And I just had to laugh because Robin really brought her bad to be acting to this reunion. And I'm not here for it. Like, girl, stop it. Okay, okay so while Candace and Robin, Candace runs down the timeline of the demise of her friendship with Robin. And like I told y'all a couple of videos ago, I told y'all, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch. Okay, I'm going to link it below. Um, Robin was mad at Candace because of the reunion last year, because of what she said to Giselle. Robin was upset with Candace. She wasn't speaking to Candace since the reunion, but she let production make it seem as if her issue with Candace is what Candace said on social media about Juan. Now, when Candace called you a fraud, that's exactly what you are, Robin. Because why not just tell Candace, I didn't like what you did? Why not sit at the reunion when Candace said what she said to Giselle? Why not say, you were sitting right next to Candace. Why not tap Candace on the shoulder and say, I didn't like what you just said and run down why you don't like what she said and have a discussion and be more than just furniture at the reunion. Say what you had to say, get it off your chest. For her to sit there and say, this conversation about colorism was so uncomfortable for me. And then you start crying, but we never see no tears. Her saying that she was so uncomfortable is nonsense, it's, it's a lie, okay? Now, I know a lot of people started watching Real Housewives of Potomac season five after the fight. They skipped the rest of the episodes and went straight to the reunion. But I'm not one of them girls, okay? I've been watching Real Housewives of Potomac since day one, okay? I remember before the show ever even aired, Wendy Williams was talking about the show in the cast photo and she said, hmm, all the women look like Tina Knowles. That's what Wendy Williams said. When I say that colorism has been a part of the show since day one, because I've been watching since 
day one, I remember all the times that Robin and Giselle put Katie in an uncomfortable situation and forced her to have conversations that she didn't want to have about race and racial identity. So when Robin is sitting there saying, I was so uncomfortable, lie again. You wasn't uncomfortable when you were forcing Katie to have these conversations that she didn't want to have. Katie invited you guys to her child's naming ceremony and y'all sat up there and made the entire experience about race. What box are your children going to check? I remember you doing that. And I remember Robin saying how people always ask her if she's biracial and she's like, no, my parents are black. When I look in the mirror, I see a black woman. Now you're uncomfortable? Girl, tell that to somebody who ain't been watching. I remember Giselle's obsession was like, oh, Katie likes the white boys. She likes the white boys. She only dates the black dudes with money. Y'all wasn't uncomfortable then. And see, this is the thing. Katie's mother was black. Her father was white. Her father died while she was young. So for Katie, identifying as just a black woman is erasing her father. And if you've lost a parent, you know how important that is for both of them to be, you know, recognized. And you guys weren't uncomfortable when you kept challenging her about this. But you're uncomfortable now because Candace said this about Giselle. She didn't call you, Robin, a colorist. She really didn't even call Giselle a colorist. And that was the part that was irritating me. Candace has never called any of you colorists. Even though you have done things that were colorist in this space. When Giselle met Ashley, did she not refer to her as a bush because of the texture of her hair? Now, Karen's saying that there are no better group of black women on the Bravo Network to talk about colorism than the Potomac ladies. In theory, she is correct because if you look around this cast, Karen is of a certain age. Um, the fact that her family owns the plantation that they used to be slaves on, the fact that she has a lighter skinned family, the fact that she was born to a dark skinned mother and has a dark skinned daughter, married a dark skinned man, she should really be able to add to the conversation. Giselle, the same thing. She's an older woman. She was born into a civil rights family. Robin, she has a perspective. And Mia also being a lighter skinned woman with a darker skinned mother and a darker skinned daughter, she should have something to say. Ashley being biracial and most of her family looks like her, but she got one brother that doesn't look like the rest of them. And Candace being a dark skinned black woman from the South and marrying a white man and having mixed stepchildren and will one day have mixed children. And Wendy being a black woman who is an immigrant and she has to dabble back and forth between cultures. Like, yes, yeah, she's Nigerian, but when she steps outside, all the world sees is black. They all should be able to come together and give us a great conversation on colorism. If they would have had a round table discussion like Love and Hip Hop did last season, or if they would have had like a, you know, a group bonding situation, if they had dedicated, they had dedicated one episode to where they sat down and really tried to understand each other, where they were coming from and what they were experiencing because of this show and within this group, it would have been great. But the problem is everyone has to be willing to be open and honest. And this group of ladies are not willing to be open or honest. Karen, like I said, Karen should really have taken this conversation and said, okay, I'm going to lead. But Karen, you sat there at season five reunion, silent. The season six reunion, silent. You only spoke up last season is because you realized this wasn't going away. Giselle sat there at all three reunions, silent. Robin, and I've said before, I didn't think Robin was colorist because it seemed like to me Robin had better sense. When she spoke up at the season five reunion, I was like, yes, girl. Okay, she told Ashley, we have to be careful with our words. And the things that you say to darker skinned black women, it has consequences. But you women are not willing, you women aren't willing to talk.
y'all willing y'all not willing to have a conversation it's almost like when robin said that she was uncomfortable i don't believe robin is uncomfortable i believe that giselle might be uncomfortable and i think she's uncomfortable because she doesn't know what receipts might come out on her or her family i think that ashley may be uncomfortable and i think that karen may be uncomfortable i don't believe that robin is i just don't. You can't have a woman sitting there hounding someone else about their racial identity. That, that is so intrusive. That is so crossing the line. But you are afraid to just have a conversation. Now, I've said it before that I feel like colorism has been a part of this show since its inception. And I still feel that way. But we all know the conversation got big um, around season four, season five. There was a lot of comparisons being made between Candace and Ashley. Now, if you were watching from the beginning, you know that Ashley was hell on wheels. Ashley did a lot, especially to Karen and Robin. And it always seems like everybody was always willing to move forward with Ashley and laugh it off and say, Ashley's just so cute. And the viewers just thought everything that she did was hilarious and cute. But then when it came down to Candace giving Ashley a little bit of a taste of her medicine, well now, oh my God, this girl is vile. This girl is terrible. Remove her from the show. She deserves to be beaten. We need to, like, I saw people say the most disgusting things about Candace. And I was just like, oh my God. Like y'all openly are being racist to this girl. Not just colorist, but racist as well. And I was just like, yikes. That is what made the conversation blow up because you have someone like Ashley who did a lot of terrible things like to look up someone's bankruptcy report and their financials and to see what they had in their bank account. That was nasty work. But you're mad at Candace for calling her wide body. But you're not mad at none of the stuff Ashley did for three seasons back to back. Back to back to back to back. She literally triggered Katie into having a mental breakdown in season four. And nobody cared. But when Candace calls her names as a rebuttal to the mess that she starts with Candace, Candace is the one that should be violently attacked. And then y'all have never said y'all want Ashley to attack Candace. No, you guys want Monique to come back on the show that she said caused her stress and strife. Y'all want Monique to leave her bubble to come back to the show to beat up on Candace. Y'all want the dark-skinned woman to come on there and protect light-skinned Ashley and beat up Candace. But y'all don't understand why people are talking about colorism. When Wendy came on the show and she was postpartum and so was Ashley, um, and we all saw the scene where Ashley felt offended by Wendy questioning why she brought her baby to the first trip of the season. And Ashley was very elitist. Ashley was very judgmental. Ashley was going off on Wendy. And when Wendy was matching her energy, she said that Wendy was ferocious. And when that led to Wendy getting hate mail and threats and being treated really poorly, And she brought this to the show and said, this is what happened when you called me ferocious. Ashley didn't want to accept no parts of that. See, Candace has to watch her words, but Ashley can say whatever she wants to. And then she says, well, when you said you have four degrees, that was elitist. Ashley, you started being elitist with her first. When you pointed out that your husband had to work because he's the owner of his company, what did you mean by that? Was that not elitist? When you said my husband is the owner of the company. You tried to imply that Wendy's husband, Eddie, being an attorney was beneath your husband. It wasn't as important as your husband being the owner of the company. Was that not elitist? All Ashley had to say in that moment is, hey, Wendy, I was upset. I didn't like that you were challenging, you know, how I parent my child. I was really sensitive about that. I was going through my own issues with my husband. And when you said that, I kind of lost my temper on you. But I apologize if the words I used against you caused you to receive hate and threats from viewers or unhinged fans. That's all she had to say.
But she tried to sit there and and invalidate, you know, invalidate what Wendy was going through. Karen and Giselle, you guys are the faces of the franchise. Y'all easily could have put this whole conversation to bed at that season five reunion and you chose not to do it. Karen sat there quietly. So did Giselle. As the leaders of the show, either one of you could have sat up there and said, hey, we do not condone that on our cast. We are all black women and we respect each other and we do not condone anyone saying something like that to you. We do not stand for it. We don't condone it. Instead, you had Ashley arguing her right to say, you called a human being ferocious. When I think of the word ferocious, I think of an animal in the wild. And you had Monique sat up there and tried to derail the conversation entirely. She even tried to put separation between herself and Wendy and Candace and said, oh, no, I'm Carmel. We all remember that. Instead of just listening to her and saying, hey, let's clear this up. You didn't want to do it. You didn't want to do it. But you constantly sit there. All of you women constantly sit there and try to police Candace and the things that she says. But you guys never want to take accountability for the things that you say and do. I think the biggest issue with Potomac is that they want to wrap up this colorism conversation within five minutes on that reunion stage, and that's impossible. If they're really serious about putting this colorism conversation to bed, they will do what Beverly Hills did, okay? Dedicate the very first episode of the next season to some team building, to everyone putting everything on the flow. Put it on the flow. Share your experiences, have a mediator there, and let's just get this all out so we don't have to come here and talk about this no more. Because all of this could be avoided with just basic respect. But see, the rules are different for each woman on the cast. The rules are different for Giselle than what they are for Candace and what they are for Ashley and what they are for Wendy and what they are for Mia and what they are for Kiana. The fact that the only women on this show that have been physically assaulted are all darker skinned women. Does that not make y'all feel some kind of way? Because it makes me feel a way. Candace was physically assaulted. Wendy was physically assaulted. Kiana trying to quell the situation. She got physically assaulted and left in an ambulance. That's the problem here. But everyone only wants to talk about this to vindicate themselves. And then they want to bypass the conversation and the issue at hand so that they can continue doing what they want to do while tying Wendy's hands, tying Candace's hands. Y'all feelings don't matter. We're going to continue to insult you whichever way we see fit. That's what y'all want to do. But yeah, they need to dedicate one episode where they have a team building activity where they finally put everything on the floor. But what's going to have to happen after that is change behavior. you all not going to be able to just say and do whatever y'all want to to one another. And I feel like that's what Giselle fears. She, she fears losing her privilege. Ashley fears losing her privilege. Robin, I never thought that Robin was a colorist, but she definitely enjoys the privilege. And who wants this, who wants their privilege to end? Because Robin probably knows she shouldn't even be there. So anyways, they bring out the husbands. And side note, we saw what you said backstage, NECA, okay? You shading Juan Dixon? Robin ain't gonna like that too much, okay? We don't know if she coming back. She ain't gonna like that. You in danger, girl. Well, maybe you're not in danger because Robin only goes off if Giselle gives her permission to go off. So if Giselle allows her to like you still, then she's gonna still like you. But she ain't gonna never forget that you did that. I promise you she won't. Now, Andy, you know you got on my nerves this episode. Okay, the line of questioning for Chris, I did not like. When he said, oh, we haven't seen you around, and Chris was like, well, if I'm not wanted, I ain't gotta be around. Oh, is Candace don't want you around? Andy, you know damn well it's these heifers with no husbands that don't want Chris around, okay? All of this started season six when Giselle was mad that Chris was around. She said that Chris was riding Candace's coattails. You know where this comes from. Don't play with us. Do not play with us, Andy. Talking about Candace don't want you around. Why wouldn't she want her man around? You tried it. As far as Robin opening up her beak to ask Chris 
about the screenshots? What about the screenshots? Robin, do you not feel shame ever? Like ever, do you? Do I just don't know what to say. I just do not know what to say. I promise you, if Chris would have said, do I look like Juan to you? You go ask Juan about that hotel receipt, I would have fell out on the floor. I wish Chris would have done it. I wish Chris would have said that to her. To wipe that weird expression off of her face, I wish Chris would have said to her, do you ask Juan these questions? Because we all know she don't ask Juan none of these questions. Juan don't even allow her to speak to him. That man told her, you make my skin crawl and hung up on her. And you got the nerve to sit your ass on that reunion couch and ask Chris anything when you know that that lady was lying on Chris. I, I, I did not want to believe that Giselle and Robin would arrange for this lady to do this to Chris. But now I'm completely convinced because y'all already talked about it on the last episode with Andy. And Andy even said the lady was lying. Mia, who's on y'all team, said the lady is not well. For you to bring this up again to Chris, we never even seen you question Juan. You asked Juan, why is your camera not working on FaceTime? He said, I don't know. And he didn't even try to fix it. Your husband don't want two shits to do with you. He don't want nothing to do with you. You asked Juan a question, he pretend to be asleep and started snoring on that massage table while y'all were being stretched at the chiropractor. But you want to ask Chris? Chris, you get too much training. Chris, you should have you should have let her have it. Well, he said, I'm going to say this to you one more time. I don't know her. I never met this woman. I don't know what screenshots you're talking about. I was like, yes, Chris. Yes, cousin Chris. Explain it to her like she's two. When Chris said, Candace is always being held accountable for the things that come out of her mouth, but y'all can sit up there and say whatever y'all want to, and we just move on. He was sick of y'all shit. He had had enough. Okay, he had had enough. Chris was like, I'm not playing with y'all no more. Y'all done pissed this man off for the last time. Because y'all both took y'all raggedy selves on y'all podcast talking about a debunked rumor. For those of y'all that do not know, there were so many inconsistencies with this lady's story. Okay? Several bloggers found lies and just straight up lies in what she was saying. Now, I noticed that that lady was communicating with a Giselle fan page. And I still did not want to believe Giselle and Robin hands was in this, but they hands is in this. Because why do you keep bringing it up? It was debunked. Y'all can go and check out Giorgio Says. He did a whole thing where he reached out to this woman and basically figured out this lady is a complete liar. Just a liar. The pictures of Chris was of a man with a completely different build. They said there were two different men in the photos that she tried to pass off as Chris. And he had a different build. He had tattoos that Chris didn't have. It wasn't Chris. The lady is a liar. The lady lied like she did not do enough research before she started to lie. And the fact that Robin don't want to let it go makes me feel like, Robin, you were a part of this. You were a part of the scam. She's so desperate to get Chris caught up in something to say, oh, I know something happened, but you sent her voice notes. Why? Because you admitted that Juan was corresponding with Miss Canada. So you want to be able to say, well, Chris did something. That is so pathetic, Robin. Like the people that love you, all your supporters, they need to, y'all need to tell her that she looked dumb. She could spend that time doing something else that benefits her. Why is it so important to you to catch Chris in something Chris didn't do? I really feel like, and this is where when people talk about the colorism, this is where the colorism comes in at. You and Giselle cannot stomach the fact that men have cheated on y'all and that Wendy and Candace have husbands that love them and that are devoted. They're not perfect. They got their own issues and their own flaws and their own shortcomings but they love their wives. Your husband can't even stand to be around you. He can't even have more than a two minute long conversation with you. He does you wrong, but you're over here begging him and walking around on eggshells when he does you dirty, but you paying all the bills. Girl, this is sad. And Andy, you pissed me off again when he said to Chris, oh, um, Chris, I thought you and Giselle made some headway last season. Giselle is being incredibly hateful to his wife. 
And you want him to do what with Giselle? You want the energy to be what? Giselle sitting up there still trying to shop around this fake ass lie um, that he had an affair with the lady who don't want to show her face. Andy, why do you like to play in Candace's face like this? So this is why Bethany Frankel is on your neck. This is why Bethany and Brandy and Caroline, they're going to make sure your 2024 is eventful. But you're still trying to play in Candace's face. Andy, do better. Because you're not dumb. Playing stupid, it doesn't become you. Anyways, that's really all I had to say. This video was incredibly long. <laughs> if you're here, thank you for listening to me because this was a long ass video. <laughs> but um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe. I'm trying to get to this 1K. I am incredibly grateful to everyone i have like a lot of new followers so thank you to y'all but um yeah please like my video share it if you will thanks for watching